We've been having a discussion on wind buffeting lately on the forums, and I've addressed this in a previous video, but I thought it might be time to readdress the subject again. So let me give a shout out to David on the MC Rider forums for asking the question this week and inspiring the topic for this week's video. First, let's define what wind buffeting is. When the motorcycle's in motion, wind is displaced by the motorcycle and the windshield of the motorcycle. This creates a void of air behind the windshield and that air rushes in to fill that void at a certain distance behind the windshield. So it's that rush of air filling that void that causes the buffeting. This becomes a problem when the rider's helmet is the location where all the air comes rushing back into because it creates a lot of noise and vibration on the rider's helmet. Not only is this not pleasant to ride like this, it can be very tiring and can rattle your helmet so much that it's difficult to see clearly up the road. So wind buffeting can be a real problem. You know, before we get into all the details of wind buffeting and how to fix that problem on your motorcycle, let me encourage you to become a member of MC Rider and spend the winter months learning on the forums and with the field guide. The forums have become a veritable encyclopedia of motorcycle knowledge and tips for riding better. Rider coaches and other experienced riders from all over the world are on the forums and they're willing to share their knowledge with anyone willing to learn and get better. So I've got a limited time discount for new members. Use promo code five off. Do you get $5 off any of the annual membership plans on MC Rider? Just select any annual plan and you'll get five off with the promo code five off. Details on becoming a member are found at mcrider.com. So fixing buffeting can be very time consuming and it may take some trial and error to fix the issue. You know, every rider is a different height. They sit differently on the motorcycle. They have different tolerances for putting up with wind. So no one solution will work for every rider. But basically there are two main approaches that riders take to fix the problem of buffeting on their motorcycle. They either go with a taller windshield or look to clean that air up. So let's look at the taller windshield option first. Many riders think that a taller windshield going higher and higher is going to fix the problem until they can move all of that wind over the top of their helmet. So this causes that rush of wind to be behind the helmet and that displacement of the wind and all that rush of the wind happens behind the rider's helmet so that the rider is sitting in this smooth pocket of air. But remember, buffeting is not caused by the direct wind hitting your helmet or riding down the road. It's that wind filling the void created by a windshield or a large fairing on a touring bike, for example. So you'll not experience wind buffeting on a naked motorcycle with no windshield. You may not like the direct wind either, but that's a different problem than wind buffeting. So I've got a Triumph Rocket 3 and my Challenger over there. Don't get any wind buffeting at all on the Rocket 3. I mean, it's got a little bitty windshield on it, but all of the wind, you know, hits chest level or up, so my helmet's in clean air. I do get a little bit of buffeting on the Challenger, and it's because it's got that big fairing on the front of it and a windshield and all of that rush of air coming in behind that fairing causes a little bit of buffeting depending on what the conditions are like. Personally, for me, I don't like the taller windshield solution. I don't like looking through a windshield. No matter how clear the windshield is, there's always going to be reflections from the sun that are distracting. The windshield gets covered in bugs that accumulate on the windshield, and I don't like looking through all that. And second, it's just a matter of preference. A giant windshield on a motorcycle doesn't look good, in my opinion. If it works for you and you're happy with it and you have no problem with your solution, you know, I say go for it, but for me, that really tall windshield sitting on the front of a motorcycle just doesn't look good. It's not a very attractive look. But if that works for you and you don't mind looking dorky, then I say go for it. Or maybe I'm alone in this opinion and a lot of people don't think that tall windshield looks that bad. You do what works for you. But a tall windshield can also make the problem worse because the bigger the windshield is, the more wind it displaces, the more void it creates behind it, and the bigger that rush of air coming in to fill that void behind the windshield. So if the taller windshield doesn't move all of the air to the right place for your particular height or your seating position on the motorcycle, 
you may find yourself in a worse position than with a shorter windshield. So if you're like me and you don't want to look through that giant tall windshield on the front of your motorcycle, the next fix is to clean up the air as it comes around the windshield and the fairing of the motorcycle. So remember, as that windshield's moving through the air, it's creating a void of air behind it. This void of air is refilled by all the surrounding air. The taller windshield will move the void higher and further back, but you know, it still may hit on your helmet unless you get up tall enough, you know, on the windshield so that you can get your helmet in a clean area. A shorter windshield can make the void smaller, so it's creating less void behind it, and that rush of air to fill that void is going to move forward. So this is my preferred solution. Uh, I prefer a windshield that's no taller than chin height. You know, if you look on a lot of uh, manufacturer's website, they'll say about even with your nose is where the top of the windshield can be. You can get a yardstick or something and see where that would sit for you, um, how you sit on your motorcycle. I prefer it chin level or, or lower, actually, because I don't want to have to look through it at all. And I don't mind my helmet being up in some clean wind. I don't like it being in the turbulence. But if it's clean wind, if it's smooth wind coming across the helmet, that works very well for me. By having a shorter windshield, it allows clean, less turbulent air to cross my helmet. You know, a good helmet's very aerodynamic and it'll cut through the wind very smoothly. Also, riding in Texas, where it's predominantly, most of the year, it's kind of hot. This allows me to keep air moving through the helmet on a hot summer day. I'm not pushing all the air over my helmet, but I'm allowing air to go through the helmet so it keeps me cooler on those days. I can open the vents up and allow air to go through. If it's cold out, I can just close the vents up on the helmet and my head can stay warm. So in my opinion, wind is not the problem, but that turbulent wind is a problem. If you're on a motorcycle with a really large fairing that moves a lot of wind, finding that right height for you will take some trial and error. That's why having a motorcycle that allows the rider to easily adjust the height of the windshield, so if you can move it up, particularly if you've got a switch like my Challenger does to move that windshield up, you can adjust the height where it's the perfect height for you. It's a really great benefit and something that a lot of riders don't realize how good it is until they have a motorcycle that has a movable windshield on it. That way you can adjust the height depending on the temperature of the day if you want to move more wind because it's colder out or the wind conditions, if you're riding into a headwind or a side wind, you can adjust the height of that windshield to help with those factors as well. It really is a nice to have feature on motorcycles and more and more common these days. But just adjusting the height of the windshield may not solve all the problems. The windshield adjusts how the air comes over the top of the motorcycle, but it does nothing for the air coming up from the bottom to fill that void. So you've seen those fork mounted wind deflectors that a lot of riders will put on their motorcycle and some motorcycles with large fairings, they're built into the side of the fairing so that they're already built into it. This helps redirect the air coming up from the lower portions of the motorcycle. So remember you're creating this void behind the windshield. Not only is air rushing in from the top to fill that void, but it's also coming up from the bottom and that wind coming up from the bottom can cause a lot of vibration as well. So you can do an experiment to see if this is something that affects you. Next time you go for a ride, take one hand off the handlebars when you're up to highway speed. You have to be going fast enough to get a feel for this, but take a hand off the handlebar and place it right next to the side of your tank so that you're blocking a little bit of wind coming from that tank. You may need to move it forward or back to get a feel for it. But if you put your hand down there and your helmet automatically gets quieter or you feel less buffeting when your hand is in a certain position, the problem that you're experiencing is that wind coming up from the bottom. So you may have solved the problem with it coming over the top, but you've still got it coming up from the bottom. And you can figure out where that is by moving your hands around. And a lot of times having a fork mounted lowers, which is what they're called for your motorcycle, will help fix a lot of that because it will deflect a lot of that wind out to the side so you don't have that as big a rush coming up from the sides of the tank. 
And I found that the lowers have a big impact on buffeting and the wind noise in particular. And getting this right will have a big impact to help solve your problem. So what about you? Do you have something that you'd like to share that's worked for you to solve wind buffeting? Leave a comment below. Tell us how you solve the problem on your motorcycle. I'd love to hear from you or become a member and support what we do here at MC Rider and join us on the conversation that's already happening on the forums where we're discussing wind buffeting. Till next week, guys, it's Kev with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.